Hey everyone, this is Mr. Nectar himself bringing you another video tutorial. This video tutorial is a little bit different than the other ones in the sense that it only applies to upgrading users. This means that if you're starting a new build with Salient 3.0 or above, you can skip this because all the information is going to be irrelevant. Okay, so there's only a few things you need to be aware of when upgrading from an older version in regards to the page builder. There's not much to do on your part, honestly, but I owe it to you all to explain everything about the process to avoid any unnecessary confusion you might have. Also, for this tutorial, I'm using an older dummy data file to simulate the experience of converting a page in the page builder. Of course, the dummy data file included with 3.0 and above already contains fully integrated page builder setups for you, though. All these points also only apply when you're converting an existing page to be used with the page builder. When you click the Visual Composer button on a page that already contains content, if that page is using salient shortcodes, then the odds are it's going to ask you to convert it. The good news is that all the possible issues are not severe at all, and you can easily use page revisions to revert to the raw salient shortcode setup if you please. You also don't even have to convert your existing pages in the setup if you don't want. You can just use the page builder for all new pages from this point on. All of your existing pages are not going to auto-convert or anything, unless you give it the go-ahead by clicking this button. Alright, I'm going to get out of this screen, and we're going to go to the first point that I want to bring up. Salient and Visual Composer both handle the idea of columns just about the same, but the use of rows is a little bit different. I'm going to create a new page just for demonstration purposes, and I'm quickly going to create a basic setup to illustrate this issue. Okay, so Salient's row element, which you're probably very familiar with, is called the Full Width Section. Salient allows you to use columns inside and outside of this element freely, but Visual Composer would prefer if all columns were contained within a row no matter what. So what this means, if you go to convert a page that has columns sitting outside of a full width section, they're each going to get wrapped on their own row. This is because the converter in Visual Composer can't possibly guess where you intended each series of columns to begin and end. So each one is just going to end up getting placed in a separate row. Let's convert this and let's see what happens. Okay, as you can see the columns inside of the full width section aka the row, all remained as they should, but the columns outside of the full width section all ended up getting placed in their own row, which is an undesirable result. Luckily, the fix for this is very simple. Just choose your desired column layout in the first applicable visual composer row. In this case, we're going to go with one-thirds and drag your column content into it. Then, once you're done that, you can simply delete the excess rows that were created by visual composer. Let's move on to the second possible bump you may encounter depending upon your setup. I'm going to go back into the editor, and I'm going to delete everything that we just made for our first example. I'm going to create another example for this quickly. Okay, so here we have a full width section, or a row as Visual Composer will see it, containing just one shortcode, the recent projects. Let's see how Visual Composer sees this. Okay. As you can see, the element is actually here, and it is contained inside of the full width section or row. Both of them are going to work properly, and you're still going to have complete control over editing both of their attributes and properties. Okay, so what's the problem you're thinking? Well, there is no problem currently. The only thing that could go wrong down the road is if for whatever reason you decide that you want to turn this element into a column-based layout. When you click any of these column layout options, it's going to delete your inner content in this row, which in this case is the recent projects element, and replace it with the columns you've selected. To mend this problem before anything ever happens, you might want to consider just switching back into the editor and actually placing your element, or whatever content you have inside of the full width section that isn't in columns, into a column. And the column to use if you want to keep it full width within the container is going to be the standard one whole visual composer column, which looks like this. And then you can end that at the bottom. And now if we switch back over, you'll see that the appearance of it changed a little bit. You can see that it now is inside of an actual column instead of just being the direct element inside of the row. And now if you wanted to change this into a column down the road, it's not going to break or anything. But again, if you don't plan on using columns in a situation like this, you really don't have to add that in and everything's still going to work properly. Okay, so the last known possible issue that I've encountered relates to the dynamic shortcodes. I'm going to go to an existing page. Here we have the home portfolio eye candy. Okay, so as I said, this relates only to the dynamic shortcodes. That is, any that rely on a unique ID for each item, such as the tab shortcodes, clients, toggles, testimonials. And what I'm about to show you isn't actually a bug. 
It's just something that Visual Composer will bring into the light, which would otherwise go unseen. As you know, when you create any of these dynamic shortcodes, they're automatically assigned an ID for you out of the shortcode generator. Sometimes when users are editing pages and they need to add additional dynamic content, they'll just copy some of these existing shortcodes and paste them in where they need them. So let's say we were strolling along, we wanted to add another few testimonials to our testimonial sliders. So you might have done something like this, where you're just selecting the testimonials and then copying them and inserting them at the end. So now there's five testimonials where there was three. Maybe you're changing, you know, the quote and the name, but you, if you forget to change the ID on each, then that means that there's going to be multiple dynamic shortcodes running the same ID. And when you try and switch it over into Visual Composer, after converting, of course, you'll see that it's not working correctly. There should be one testimonial per each one of these slides, and when you switch, as you can see, only the first one is. And the ones with the duplicated IDs are kind of just sitting there where they shouldn't be. So to fix this one, all you have to do is make sure that each one of your dynamic shortcodes has unique IDs. In this case, we can change this to T4 and T5 because those are the two ones we added on the end. Once we switch back over, we can see that that problem clears itself up. Okay, so that concludes all the known issues that could arise when converting a page. And as you can see, they're pretty straightforward and simple to remedy should you encounter any of these. Of course, remember, this will only be relevant information if you indeed make the choice to convert older pages to use the new page builder. Please join me in the next video where I'm going to continue covering more about the page builder, but this time I'm going to be covering fundamentals of actually using it to create pages. I encourage that everyone should check it out to get the most out of this exciting